Yule or Yuletide, Yule Time, is a festival observed by the historical Germanic peoples. Scholars have connected the celebration to the Wild Hunt, the god Odin, and the pagan Anglo-Saxon Modronit. It later underwent Christianized reformulation resulting in the term Christmastide. Terms with an etymological equivalent to Yule are used in the Nordic countries for Christmas with its religious rites, but also for the holidays of this season. Today Yule is also used to a lesser extent in the English-speaking world as a synonym for Christmas. Present-day Christmas customs and traditions such as the Yule log, Yule goat, Yule boar, Yule singing, and others stem from pagan Yule. Today the event is celebrated in heathenry and some other forms of modern paganism. Etymology <inaudible> 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 Yule is the modern English representation of the Old English words Jeol or Jeahal and Jeola or Jeoli, with the former indicating the twelve-day festival of Yule, later Christmastide, and the latter indicating the month of Yule, whereby Era Jeola referred to the period before the Yule festival December and Aftera Jeola referred to the period after Yule January. Both words are thought to be derived from Common Germanic asterisk Jekyla, and are cognate with Gothic Fruma Julis, Old Norse, Icelandic, Faroese and Norwegian Nynorsk Jol, Jol, Lur, Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian Bakmal July. The etymological pedigree of the word, however, remains uncertain, though numerous speculative attempts have been made to find Indo-European cognates outside the Germanic group, too. The noun Yuletide is first attested from around 1475. The word is attested in an explicitly pre-Christian context, primarily in Old Norse. Among many others, see list of names of Odin. The long-bearded god Odin bears the names Jolfar, Old Norse for Yule Father, and Yalnir, the Yule One. In plural, Old Norse Jolnir, the Yule Ones, may refer to the Norse gods in general. In Old Norse poetry, the word is often employed as a synonym for feast, such as in the Kenning Hugens Joel Old Norse, Huggins Yule, a raven's feast. Jolly may share the same etymology, but was borrowed from Old French Jola, French Jolie, itself from Old Norse Joel plus Old French suffix if compare Old French Isif, easy. Modern French fest if equals fest, feast, plus if. The word was first mentioned by the Anglo-Norman chronicler Geoffrey Guimar in his Estoire des Anglais, or History of the English People, written between 1136 to 40. Topic: <laughs> Germanic Paganism. Yule is an indigenous midwinter festival celebrated by the Germanic peoples. The earliest references to it are in the form of month names, where the Yule tide period lasts somewhere around two months in length, falling along the end of the modern calendar year between what is now mid-November and early January. Topic: <laughs> Attestations. Yule is attested early in the history of the Germanic peoples. From the fourth century Gothic language, it appears in the month name Fruma Julis, and in the eighth century, the English historian Bede wrote that the Anglo-Saxon calendar included the months Geola or Juli, corresponding with either modern December or December and January. While the Old Norse month name Lur is similarly attested, the Old Norse corpus also contains numerous references to an event by the Old Norse form of the name Joel. In Chapter 55 of the Prose Edda book Skaldskaparmal, different names for the gods are given. One of the names provided is, Yule Beings. A work by the skald Avond R. Skaldispalir that uses the term is then quoted, which reads, Again we have produced Yule Beings' feast, meat of poetry, our ruler's eulogy, like a bridge of masonry. In addition, one of the numerous names of Odin is Yalnir, referring to the event, the saga of Hakon the Good credits King Hakon I of Norway with the Christianization of Norway as well as rescheduling the date of Yule to coincide with Christian celebrations held at the time. The saga states that when Hakon arrived in Norway he was confirmed a Christian, but since the land was still altogether heathen and the people retained their pagan practices, Hakon hid his Christianity to receive the help of the great chieftains. In time, Hakon had a law passed establishing that Yule celebrations were to take place at the same time as the Christians celebrated Christmas. And at that time everyone was to have ale for the celebration with a measure of grain, or else pay fines, and had to keep the holiday while the ale lasted. Yule had previously been celebrated for three nights from midwinter night, according to the saga. 
Hawken planned that when he had solidly established himself and held power over the whole country, he would then have the gospel preached. According to the saga, the result was that his popularity caused many to allow themselves to be baptized, and some people stopped making sacrifices. Hawken spent most of this time in Trondheim. When Hawken believed that he wielded enough power, he requested a bishop and other priests from England, and they came to Norway. On their arrival, Hawken made it known that he would have the gospel preached in the whole country. The saga continues, describing the different reactions of various regional things. A description of pagan Yule practices is provided. Notes are Hollander's own. It was ancient custom that when sacrifice was to be made, all farmers were to come to the heathen temple and bring along with them the food they needed while the feast lasted. At this feast all were to take part of the drinking of ale. Also all kinds of livestock were killed in connection with it, horses also, and all the blood from them was called halat sacrificial blood, and halobali, the vessel holding the blood, and halatinar, the sacrificial twigs, aspergils. These were fashioned like sprinklers, and with them were to be smeared all over with blood the pedestals of the idols and also the walls of the temple within and without, and likewise the men present were to be sprinkled with blood. But the meat of the animals was to be boiled and served as food at the banquet. Fires were to be lighted in the middle of the temple floor, and kettles hung over them. The sacrificial beaker was to be borne around the fire, and he who made the feast and was chieftain, was to bless the beaker as well as all the sacrificial meat. The narrative continues that toasts were to be drunk. The first toast was to be drunk to Odin, for victory and power to the king. The second to the gods Nor and Freyr, for good harvests and for peace. And thirdly a beaker was to be drunk to the king himself. In addition, toasts were drunk to the memory of departed kinsfolk. These were called mini. Topic. Theories and interpretation Scholars have connected the month event and Yule time period to the Wild Hunt a ghostly procession in the winter sky, the god Odin who is attested in Germanic areas as leading the Wild Hunt and, as mentioned above, bears the name Yalnir, an increased supernatural activity, such as the aforementioned Wild Hunt and the increased activities of Draugr. Undead beings who walk the earth, Modranit, an event focused on collective female beings attested by Bede as having occurred among the pagan Anglo-Saxons on what is now Christmas Eve, has been seen as further evidence of a fertility event during the Yule period. The events of Yule are generally held to have centered on midwinter, although specific dating is a matter of debate, and feasting, drinking, and sacrifice blot were involved. Scholar Rudolf Simic comments that the pagan Yule feast had a pronounced religious character, and comments that it is uncertain whether the Germanic Yule feast still had a function in the cult of the dead and in the veneration of the ancestors, a function which the mid-winter sacrifice certainly held for the West European Stone and Bronze Ages. The traditions of the Yule log, Yule goat, Yule boar still reflected in the Christmas ham, Yule singing, and others stem from Yule customs, and customs which Simic says, indicates the significance of the feast in pre-Christian times. Topic. Contemporary traditions In modern Germanic language speaking areas and some other northern European countries, historical cognates to English Yule denote the Christmas holiday season. Examples include July in Sweden, in Denmark and in Norway, Joel in Iceland and the Faroe Islands, Julu in Finland, Jolfest in Friesland, Jolfeast in the Netherlands, and Jolid in Estonia. Topic. Neopaganism As forms of neopaganism can be quite different and have very different origins, these representations can vary considerably despite the shared name. Some celebrate in a way as close as possible to how they believe ancient Germanic pagans observed the tradition, while others observe the holiday with rituals, assembled from different sources. In Germanic neopagan sects, Yule is celebrated with gatherings that often involve a meal and gift giving. Groups such as the Asatru Folk Assembly in the U.S. recognize the celebration as lasting 12 days, beginning on the date of the winter solstice. In most forms of Wicca, this holiday is celebrated at the winter solstice as the rebirth of the great horned hunter god, who is viewed as the newborn solstice sun. The method of gathering for this Sabbath varies by practitioner. Some have private ceremonies at home, while others do so with their covens. Topic. See also. 
Disablot, an event attested from Old Norse sources as having occurred among the pagan Norse Modronit, an event attested by Bede as having occurred among the pagan Anglo-Saxons on what is now Christmas Eve Saturnalia, an ancient Roman festival in honor of the deity Saturn, held on 17 December and expanded with festivities through 23 December Yalda Night, an Iranian festival celebrated on the longest and darkest night of the year. Topic Notes. Topic References. Topic External Links. Quotations related to Yule at Wikiquote. Media related to Yule at Wikimedia Commons.